Wait, the episode's fucked the bot squeezed, mate. Yeah, I can hear you. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's it's not going to be very entertaining. It's not going to be a very fun episode. Um, but they asked for it. They wanted it. Oh, whatever. When Since when have you been Mr. Fun Cat, Mr. King of Entertainment Cat? When have you ever been entertaining? It's pretty good. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 43. Uh, the last episode, I asked if you'd like me to uh, do a video about flocking and basing techniques, and that's what we're gonna do. So it's your fault, really, if you think about it. Um, anyway, I don't really flock and I don't really base my models that often, very, very rarely, or at all. So today I wanna try out a load of techniques. Now I haven't really researched this, I don't really research much. Uh, I should have probably watched some videos by some, you know, other YouTubers that do a lot of basing and flocking, but I didn't. Um, I'm just kind of using my brain to kind of work out ways of flocking and uh, making bases. You'll see. So I went online, had a look at like flocks and, you know, little stones and base ready stuff. And it's, it's expensive. You know, you're literally buying dirt and sand. So I want to figure out a way of getting that stuff, you know, cheap. Figuring out a cheap way of doing that uh, and a cheap way to get bases because, you know, I don't know, make it make it a challenge, I guess. I could just buy everything. See, I told you, Kat, it's going to be interesting. He never believes in me. You asked for it. You uh, you asked for it. You may not have wanted it, but you've got it. Okay. Today we're going to be talking about bases, flocking, and uh, you know, basing materials. Basically, uh, you know, that stuff I never ever show in my episodes ever. These are some bases. Uh, these are your usual bases that you get with your models, and all that's got a little skull on it. But to make this interesting for me and hopefully for you, I wanted to figure out ways of doing this on the cheap. You know, budget basing, if you will. So there are alternatives out there, you know, this, this is a little wooden bases that I found in a cheap craft shop. You get hundreds in a bag and they work perfectly fine, but uh, let's go even cheaper. Um, sometimes I've used a lid, a lid, this is a milk bottle lid, uh, you can use those for bases. Basically anything round and hard you can use as a base, like this thing, I'm not sure what this is. So obviously lids come in all different sizes and shapes uh, and so do your build so sometimes if I make a bigger build I use a lid like this one of these weird square ones uh, some sort of makeup lid I'm not sure uh, it's not mine so I went and dug up some old models this is the uh, the old beadbot samurai I made and the beadbot cowboy or cowboy beadbot as you like to say and uh, these haven't been based yet so I'm probably going to base these but I'll probably just show you the easiest way I base my models and this monster and a few other monsters I still haven't based those and they don't really look complete until they're based i just need to find the right size base for them i don't really have anything big enough and i looked online for big wooden bases for things like this and it's really expensive so i'm going to pop to a charity shop or a thrift store for you americans and uh, see what i can find oh i'm back hello uh, i'm back again uh, i just popped to the uh, shop and i found these wooden coasters in the charity shop now these wooden coasters are what you use to protect your table from th that boiling hot tea that would just kind of I, I guess it would melt a hole in the table i'm not sure what they're for but they're really good pieces of wood and they make really good bases and they're dirt cheap so always look out for these in charity shops but to be honest, I want something round. So I went and had a look again and I found these. These are kind of nice, fancy round coasters. I live in an area where there's lots of old people and uh, old people love coasters, it seems. Uh, but two pound for six of these and these are really cool looking little bases. So that looks like a perfect base for my weird skulk. All right, maybe not. It doesn't really fit. Um, I have other monsters around here, so I'm just going to see what else fits. That's, yeah, this guy should fit. Yep, that's perfect. That fits on there. Uh, actually, perfect size for him. And do you remember this guy, the beadbot boss uh, thing? I think I want to base him as well. So, 
yeah, that could work. But I need bigger, so I pop back out to the other charity shop. There's lots of charity shops around here for some reason. Uh, and I found these for two pound. These are just like the other round wooden bases, but much bigger. And they are perfect. Look at those. So you're probably asking yourself, is this video gonna be all about tea coasters? Um, no, this is just the basing section. And I think I found the perfect solution for cheap bases. Uh, if you wanna take anything away from this whole overly long intro section. So this episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, if you've ever wanted to make a website and you're not really sure how to do it, Squarespace is the place to go. Look, you get provided with hundreds of templates like these just here, and they're all pretty cool designs, I'll give them that. And uh, say you wanna make a website about pickles. Look, oh, there we go, there's a pickle website. You can literally open this up, change the names. There you go, you have a pickle website. So I decided to make a website of my own for bill making stuff. Now I've made plenty of websites in the past and I have to say that Squarespace is the easiest and most intuitive website build I've ever used. It's uh, so easy to get great effect. I mean, look at this, this took me like five minutes. Uh, so if you wanna make a website, click on the link down below. There is a sale going on, uh, there you go. So now we have our bases. We need some cheap basing materials. Now this is just really fine sand and I got some for my kids uh, sand pit. I kept some for myself. And one of the best places to get all your flocking and basing supplies is a pet shop. I found this uh, weird kind of stony sand for lizards, I guess, in uh, my local pet shop for a couple of quid. And it's a giant bag of it. It's really cool stuff. And the same with this. This is kind of fish gravel where fishes poop in. They, they can only poop in gravel for some reason. Makes them feel comfortable, I guess. But these make really good little rocks. So as well as crusted, I use baking powder, like for really fine kind of sand and stuff like that. It's really, you gotta be careful. <laughs> oh, um, so I wanna talk about making tufts and grass. And uh, basically this is the head of an old paintbrush and this is a little paintbrush, but any old paintbrush that you have, uh, use that. We can, anything that you can just cut up. And some twine. This is like that old twine that you'd see in old films where they'd wrap it around a brown parcel for some reason. Like the twine would keep it. Anyway, I've got green kind and brown kind and I use this for grass and flocking all the time. And another great find from my local pet shop is this orchid bark. It makes perfect little rocks. Uh, it's like wood chips that you can steal from a park but you don't have to bake it and disinfect it yourself and it's pretty cheap. So definitely a good find. So first things first, I'm gonna show you how I base all my minis uh, and I'm gonna make my own texture paste. So what you're gonna need is some baking powder, you know, a little bit of that in a cup and uh, yeah, it gets, it gets everywhere. Let me just uh, blow that off. Uh, and then we're gonna want some sand, some fine sand will do, but if you want more texture, go for some thicker sand. We're gonna call this lizard sand from now on because it's for lizards. And some PVA glue, and it's as simple as that. Mix it all together with your favorite colored paint. I wanna go for this custard color for some reason. And we're gonna call it crusted because uh, that's what we call it here on Bill Making Stuff. So essentially, it's texture paste. That's what it is, you know, or you can mix whatever color paint you want in there, make textured paint. It works for anything and it's dirt cheap. You can buy it in a pot if you want from a hobby shop or you can make it yourself. Uh, it's up to you, really up to you. Uh, I told you I'm gonna be cheap in this episode. Cheaper than usual, anyway. We'll just save some of that crusted for later. The only thing with crusted is it takes a, a few hours to dry, but once it's dry, it's rock solid, and we can do some lovely dry brushing with this. Uh, I want a sand color, so I'm probably gonna use, yeah, I use a uh, sand color. Uh, it's called sand, because it's the color of sand. It's really handy when you're doing sand. Um, anyway, there's lots of dry brushing in this video, so I uh, hope you look forward to that. And that is basically how I base all my minis. Uh, not very exciting, but, you know, effective. So let's base something a bit bigger. Uh, I'm gonna use one of these coasters with a bit of crusted uh, and let's experiment. I'm not really sure exactly what I'm gonna do here, but let's have fun. So we're gonna base this thing first. Uh, I wanna paint some of these fish stones of brown, so I'm gonna stick it in a little cup. The best way to paint anything small and fiddly is in a cup, just stir it around. Or you can paint every stone individually, really up to you. Uh, I mixed this paint with a bit of PVA glue so it would stick to the crusted. So I'm going to be doing the same thing with this orchid bark. I need some big chunky rocks. 
One of the best things I ever realized was if you just mix a bit of PVA glue in with some paint, it kind of seals the thing and sticks the thing and changes the color of the thing. So it's, you know, pretty handy. So after you've placed some bigger rocks, it's always a good idea to check your model will actually sit on the base. Uh, yeah, just like that. Thanks, Bill. So like I said, this was like an experiment. I've never really made a base like this before. So I thought I'd just dry brush the whole thing in sand and uh, yeah, see where we go from there. There's lots of dry brushing in this video. So, you know, it was fun. Obviously that looks pretty ugly. So we're gonna make some oil wash using some oil paints and some white spirit. And there you go, we've got some oil wash. Nice brand color. Now I understand it. Quite a lot of people are afraid of oil washes, but you put it down like this and it doesn't look anything like that when it dries. Uh, I'll show you in a minute. Let me just... Uh... So while the oil wash dries, I'm gonna make some flock. Now this is an old technique for making flock. Basically you take that twine I mentioned earlier and you keep trimming it like this uh, for hours and hours and hours and hours. Uh, let's add some brown in there. Basically, the more you trim it, the more flock you're gonna get but it's cheap and it works. It does take a bit of time, and but you can cut it to whatever length you like, which is quite handy. So if you don't want that twine color flock, you can color it to whatever color you want. Basically add a drop of paint and stir it around like this, but only a drop because a tiny bit of paint goes a long way with this stuff and then dry it out. If you want to be extra fancy pants, uh, you can use a strainer like this and you can get extra fine flock. Uh, I don't usually do this, but look at that. Oh, fine. So as you can see, the oil wash has dried to a more uh, agreeable color. Now using PVA glue, I'm going to add some of this red flock as kind of moss on the rocks. I'm not sure how it's going to look, but it's an alien planet. Uh, this creature is an alien and he is on a planet, so... Uh, I think I might add a few skulls because, you know, I have a few skulls sitting around and, you know, what's a base without skulls, right, Alex? And there we go, there's my first based monster. Now it looks pretty good, but I think I can do better. So next I'm gonna base this handsome fella and I wanna do some kind of desert cracked earth. So as well as a ton of coasters, I also found these placemats. Now these are what old people use to stop your dinner plate from burning a hole in the table. Now on the other side of these horrible things is cork, which as we all know, is a great crafting material. So if you need cheap cork, get cheap placemats. To achieve a cracked earth look, basically it's like just putting together a jigsaw really badly and leaving big gaps in between, you know, the way, the way your kids do it. So to create some stones and rubble, we're gonna use some lizard sand and some fish rocks. So I think this is a little bit of a compulsion of mine, but I save everything in jars, uh, like this stuff is basing material uh, for later. Uh, thank you for popping in, Mr. Ellswood. So as always, I'm going with some yellow ochre, 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 that, that color. And I'm gonna dry brush some sand on top. And my God, was this thing satisfying to dry brush? I mean, look at that. So you're gonna see a pattern form here. Basically, I'll dry brush the thing and then oil wash the thing and then dry brush the thing again because I do love to dry brush. Plus it looks really good, uh, as you can see here. Look at that. Oh yes. Ooh like a digestive biscuit. I'll take a bite. Anyway, I quite like that one. Pretty good. Let's go to the next one. So, you enjoying the video so far? It's all right if you ain't. This episode was, this is like an experimenting episode. I'm experimenting with techniques. Like, it's not like I've got this really good technique I'm gonna show you. It's like, no, I've got, I just, in my head, I feel like this should work. So this is what I'm gonna try. It's how I do it, you know, or how I think you should do it, or how I, you know, learn how to do it. Basically, it's just a how why, not a how to. So uh, I hope that explains some of this. Anyway, join Patreon, uh, go on my Amazon wish list, buy me something. If you like this show, keep it going. And um, anything to say? No, back to it. So I'm gonna base Mr. Beadbot Boss here. And uh, I wanna kind of move away from uh, organic rocks and, you know, tufts, and I want to do something maybe a little bit more industrial and rusty. Let's face it, rusty, lots of rust. Now these are 
basically bits of plastic crap, I like to call it. Uh, old sequins and beads that I don't use and bits of plastic. So I'll take a quick look on the floor for any other bits of plastic crap I have lying around. And here we go, we've got some uh, granny grating and yeah, let's stick some rocks and sand in there and a bit of rusty color and glue. And we have some rust ragu. I didn't mean for that to rhyme. It just happened that way. So you just want to paste this rust ragu, uh, copyright bill making stuff, all over the base and uh, let it dry. Now this stuff takes a long time to dry. Uh, I use a heat gun to speed it up and in between drying sessions I like to tease it and move it around a bit more to reveal more of the junk from underneath, uh, just like that. Now keep this going for a while and then let it dry overnight and we should be good. So once dried, this thing is like the most perfect dry brushing biscuit ever, look. I mean, oh God. This is the painting I like. This is this is what I live for, you know. The dry brush. Look at that. Oh, I'm just gonna be quiet. Just a few more coats of dry brushing, and I think I think we're pretty much done. Uh, I did use some uh, pigment powders, some rusty colored pigment powder that I made episodes ago. Uh, I might leave a link for that up here. Probably not, I'll probably forget, but there we go. Looking pretty good, but uh, I think we can do better. So do you remember this creature, the not face hugger, face hugger I made? Uh, we're gonna base that. I mean, it's a little bit too big for the base, but uh, I want it to hide amongst grass. So we're gonna need some uh, tufts, tufts. Tufts is a funny word, isn't it? Uh, basically, this is a giant paintbrush that I bought from the pound store like years ago and I've never needed another one since. Cut it up, get your little uh, strands like this and just glue them together and there you go, you've got some little basic tufts. Another good place to find basic materials is in the gardening section of any shop. I found this coconut fiber stuff, which I guess you use in plant pots to, I don't know, keep plants warm. Uh, and I want to see if they make better tufts. I've never used them before. Glue them together, not to yourself. Oh my God, look at that. Uh, and yeah, I mean, to be honest, they look a hundred times better than the paintbrush method. So coconut fiber all the way. So the same way we made the grass. I want to make some little grass tufts by cutting longer bits of twine and kind of sticking them down together in a kind of tufty fashion. Uh, it's quite tricky uh, and it takes a bit of fiddling, but it works. Uh, it makes little tufts. They're not as good as store-bought tufts, granted. But you know, this is budget basing with bill making stuff, you know. What do you expect? So using tufts and grass and rocks, I want to make sure there's actual room for my model to sit on the base. And I drew some rudimentary blobs uh, just to make sure, you know, rudimentary blobs. One thing I didn't mention earlier is basically if you're going to kind of pot rocks and sand and grit, uh, you should always go from big to small, so big rocks down to fine sand, which I didn't do earlier, but I remembered it now and I did it now. Uh, you know, so just uh, rewind and watch the whole video again with that in mind. Oh, this was the best one to dry brush. Uh, I have to admit it, there was, there was so much texture on here. And it does look a bit strange dry brushing these rocks, really bright sand, but it worked out in the end. And I used watered down rust color paint for the bushes and I painted them afterwards and it worked out fine. Um, all we need now is a bit of oil wash, I think, and maybe just one more dry brushing for the road. But uh, this whole video was an experiment. I never really flock and do basing like this. I've never done it before. And I wanted to try some techniques and come up with cheap ways of doing it. I hope that is what I achieved. I hope you enjoyed it. You got something from it. Uh, I, I know I got better because this is my favorite base out of the lot. Look at that. You know, I'm pretty happy. And here we are. Here's the results. Uh, stick around for the glamour shots. I'm actually really happy. Uh, it's really fun doing basin, especially big basin. I'm not really too keen on doing like little miniature basin. Uh, that, which is why I just cover them in crusted. But yeah, it was quite fun. Uh, what do you think of the techniques, if you liked them? Uh, if there are better ways of doing all this stuff, let me know in the comments down below. I'm sure you will. Did you like the episode? Do you like episodes like this, where I just kind of experiment, try out techniques that I think are going to work? Um, will you get to see no expertise whatsoever? 
if you like that let me know stick around for the glamour shots and i'll see you next time uh, i'll probably edit those in about now and there we go uh, i'm really happy uh, i meant what i said when i said the models didn't really feel complete they they never felt complete until they're based and, and now they do um before they were sat on my shelf like converted toys and my son would pick them up throw them in the toilet or in a bowl of cereals or something like that and now they have bases they look more like sculptures you know they look a little bit more important and he might be a little bit more hesitant to pick them up and uh, you know throw out the window probably not but we'll, we'll see so all that's left is to thank my patrons thank you patrons as we speak they are currently building their own rusters do you remember rusters a few episodes ago i made some little figures called rusters well they're making their own and i'm going to show it next week hopefully